want a war, you're gonna get one. Now get the gun in the trust to my generation. I'll take the fall, the saints, and the cross of nations. And it's a sex to die on the brakes. The cross that messes with me. Come on, come on, come on. Let's get out of the music. Play that fucking music. Listen to my music, Welcome to, what are we at now, uh, episode 75 of Reliving the War, and welcome to the 17th of March 1997. We have both a fallout show and a go-home show this week. WCW just finished their uncensored pay-per-view last night, and Eric Bischoff's squad is live from Savannah, Georgia. And this episode of Raw is War from Syracuse, New York, is the Raw before WrestleMania 13. If you didn't see the uncensored review on this channel, make sure you check it out before continuing. And if you want to get notified when the WrestleMania 13 review goes live, and if you want to help out the channel, please subscribe. Gonna be upfront, I'm very excited for this episode of Raw. It's maybe my favourite Raw episode of this era, and the ending is absolutely fantastic. But on the flip side, we have an episode of Nitro totally jam-packed with matches, some of which don't even make it to a minute and a half. So grab your snacks, settle in, and enjoy the latest episode of Reliving the War. Raw begins this week with Savio Vega in Crush vs LOD, while Rey Mysterio battles Psychosis on Nitro. We also have an Arn Anderson promo. Rey Mysterio was coming off another loss to Prince Iakea on pay-per-view while Psychosis took a loss to Ultimo Dragon a battle of the losers to kick off Monday Night Row. Ray starts off with a grounded waistlock and he tries to steal it with an early crucifix pin but Psychosis counters with a reverse headlock. Ray then performs a sunset flip that only gets him a two count and then we go backstage briefly where we see Sonny Ono and Ultimo Dragon providing Japanese commentary for the WCWWrestling.com webcast. Dragon covers his face with his hand. Pedro Morales provides Spanish commentary also. A test of strength monkey flip sequence looks a bit shaky when Psychosis loses balance momentarily, but the recovery afterwards is excellent. Mysterio pulls off a nice drop kick here. Ray performs a lion salt, but he lands on his feet. He then sends Psychosis across the ring with a monkey flip. An inverted springboard head scissor sends Psychosis out of the ring, and then Ray lands a hurricane rana from the apron to the outside. Back in the ring, Psychosis sets Ray up on the top rope, but Mysterio moves out of the way afterwards and Psychosis flies out of the ring. Mysterio follows up with a somersault senton, we then see the West Coast pop back in the ring, and the bump Psychosis takes here looks pretty scary, looks like he took the impact on his head. Ray Mysterio wins a match that ran for 3 minutes and 40 odd seconds, the second longest match on this week's episode of Monday Nitro, and that's not an exaggeration. After the match, Arn Anderson gets interviewed by Mean Gene Okerlund, and the tone here is quite serious. Double A is going to talk about his health over the past 90 days. The Enforcer says, First of all, Uncensored was a historic night for WCW because it was a night where Sting came home. Mean Gene agrees. Arn then says that since around Halloween Havoc last year, he's been dealing with neck issues, serious neck issues that are causing paralysis in Arn's left hand. The 5th, 6th and 7th vertebrae in his neck need fused, and Arn explains that he didn't go for surgery right away because he wanted to see the four horsemen hold themselves together without the enforcer. After their performance at Uncensored and because Ric Flair is due to make his comeback, Arn says he's satisfied he can disappear and get the surgery he requires. Arn then says that he watched Kevin Sullivan's son on WCW Saturday Night say that his father is dead to him and Arn says that's something a parent should never have to hear. So when Arn wakes up from the operating table, he says he wants a clean slate with Sullivan. Their rivalry should now be water under the bridge. Arn doesn't want sympathy, this isn't a sob story. Arn says the great wrestlers always come back, and Arn will be back once again to ride with the four horsemen. Over on Raw, the tag team match starts out as a wild brawl on the outside. All four men make it into the ring eventually where the fight continues, and Ahmed Johnson, who's been barred from ringside, cuts a split screen promo and Vince asks what are we going to see in the Chicago street fight at Wrestlemania. 
Ahmed says he doesn't know anything could happen and fans might see something they don't want to see. Ahmed Johnson, Salesman of the Month. Finally, things settle down with Hawk and Savio Vega inside the ring and, for fuck's sake, Farouk shows up and he cuts a promo too. He says there's no team more unified than the Nation of Domination. And then Farouk says this. I forgot, Ahmed. You can't understand me. I better speak your body to you. You go and get them there, Road Warriors. Oh. Oh, road Warrior Animal with a chin lock. Is it safe to watch this match without another interruption? Both men get to their feet. Animal tags Hawk back in and... We see footage of the nation beating up Ahmed Johnson at a Madison Square Garden house show. All I want to do is watch the match. Hawk's then able to land a dropkick followed by a body slam and a fist drop. He goes to the top rope and... Ugh. We come back from commercial break, the nation begin using underhanded tactics to keep Hawk away from his corner. And then, look at this, even Farouk's fed up with this shit. Frustrated that he can't watch this bout without a million interruptions, the nation's leader attacks Ahmed Johnson backstage. Ahmed is left in the fatal position after taking a whipping from Farouk. Back in the ring, Animal hits a ring-shaking power slam on Savio Vega and he takes out Crush immediately afterwards. He then hits a double clothesline on both opponents and needless to say, the audience are very much behind LOD here. Savio then gets lifted up for a doomsday device but Farouk hits the ring, Animal gets taken out and the ref calls for the bell. Watch that run in again. <laughs> Farouk didn't just push the crew member away, he fucking hit him with a nightstick. The nation beat up the Legion of Doom, Ahmed Johnson then runs in and the audience absolutely lose their minds. We see a Pearl River plunge and Delo takes the doomsday device. Unbelievable reactions here for LOD and Ahmed Johnson. After the match we go to the commentary desk and Vince McMahon says there's some rumours going on backstage that the WWF title will not be on the line in tonight's Sid vs Bret Hart match. A curious thing to announce seeing the WWF were gloating a few weeks back about not pulling bait and switches on their audience. Whatever's happened here, Gorilla Monsoon has had to jump on a plane and make his way to Raw in order to address the WWF Championship match. Not only that, Jerry Lawler says he heard another rumour. Shawn Michaels, who we last saw on Thursday Raw Thursday, is also on his way to the arena. Next up we had DDP vs Max and Flash Funk vs Triple H. One and a half minutes it took DDP to defeat Max and I am going to keep talking about the match lengths on Nitro because it's really bad this week. Page added a top rope splash to his moveset here and he ended the match with a diamond cutter. Dallas cut a promo afterwards, remember both he and his wife Kimberly felt the wrath of the macho man at Uncensored. Page says Savage got personal at the pay per view, Randy Savage was born to be a chalk outline and right now the macho man is nothing more than a dead man walking. DDP then goes to walk back up the entranceway but then he hears Savage's voice and he turns back. The Macho Man is in the audience with Miss Elizabeth and Randy tells DDP to remove the bass from his voice. Savage says he's a superstar, an icon and Paige is the man with no name. The Macho Man asks Elizabeth if he should give Dallas a match right now on Nitro or wait until another time. DDP gets all fired up and he screams he wants the match now before giving chase. The segment ends with Savage and Liz running away from DDP. Over on Raw, China officially got her name when she came out with Triple H for the first time ever on TV. It was announced during this match that Triple H will face Goldust at WrestleMania 13. Quite a lot of this WrestleMania has been left at the last minute, hasn't it? There was this spot here which was almost disastrous but they saved it, luckily. And China stood on the outside offering Triple H assistance, ensuring that Helmsley picked up the win with a pedigree. China held Flash Funk afterwards and Triple H got in a few cheap shots. It looks like Goldust is going to have his hands full this Sunday, with China and Hunter coming across as very dominant indeed here on Raw. After the match, Shawn Michaels showed up backstage, HBK is in the building and we're going to hear from Shawn a little later on. We then got the return of the minis on Raw, Mini Vader and Mini Mankind vs Mini Goldust and Masquerita Sagrada and over on Nitro, Joe Gomez and the Renegade tried to get a victory over Hugh Morris and Conan. Mini Goldust looks pretty good here. Before the mini match, we saw footage of a press conference from the Continental Airlines Arena 
where Governor Christine Todd Whitman announces no taxes for the WWF in New Jersey. The Undertaker and Linda McMahon are in attendance here, and Vince is so delighted about the announcement that he lets everyone know that SummerSlam 1997 and a future episode of Raw's War will be held in East Rutherford later in the year. This kid doesn't look too delighted though, looks like he's pooping his pants with fear of the dead man. Masquerita Sagrada was definitely the star of the show here, even though he took this insane boot to the head from the man they call Mini Vader. The babyfaces won the match and Sagrada jumped off the stage onto Wee Vader to end the segment. Not sure what else to say about this one really, there's something oddly satisfying about watching these guys beat each other up. Over on Nitro we had Dungeon of Doomers Conan and Hugh Morris taking on Jogo and the Renegade, and before the match could take place, Easy e and the Outsider showed up to make an announcement. Bischoff says that Nash and Hall will wrestle tonight, and they will put the tag titles on the line. Tony Schiavone rightfully says that Eric got suspended and he can't book matches, but <laughs> here let's pull this bad boy out again, I thought I was finished with this. So it sounds like the reward has changed. Because the New World Order won the uncensored main event, they sort of have control over the belts that they currently own, meaning they can book themselves in matches whenever they want as long as their titles are on the line. So WCW has once again made changes to our uncensored rules and I'm really running out of space here. I thought we were done with all this nonsense. Back to the match and it's 5 minutes of action, the longest match on Nitro this week and probably the most predictable. Hugh Morris picked up the win with the no laughing matter moonsault, the renegade looked at Gomez afterwards as if to say why did you fuck it all up pal, and our favourite referee Mark Curtis gave Jogo a hug. Back to the drawing board lad, back to the drawing board. Bret Hart cuts a promo on Raw while Dean Malenko defends the US title against Scotty Riggs. Before the Bret Hart promo, Gorilla Monsoon shows up backstage and he clarifies tonight's main event. The WWF Championship will be on the line as promised to both Bret Hart and the fans watching at home. McMahon asks whether this is fair to The Undertaker and The Undertaker's fans, and Jerry Lawler accuses Monsoon of buckling under the pressure of Bret Hart's consistent complaining, but Gorilla holds his ground and says the title match was promised and a title match will happen tonight on Raw's War. The hitman then makes his way down to the ring for an interview with Kevin Kelly. Brett says he's gonna change the face of WrestleMania 13 tonight, he doesn't care what anyone thinks. Brett says he won the Royal Rumble, he won the Final Four, he's a four time WWF Champion and he deserves respect. The hitman says there's a new motto in the World Wrestling Federation, you scratch my back and I'll stab yours. And he knows The Undertaker isn't thrilled about Brett getting this title shot, but when Brett wins the belt, he promises to give the Phenom a title shot. In regards to Stone Cold Steve Austin and the submission match, Brett's going to give Stone Cold the worst thrashing of his life. Hart will beat Austin so bad that he won't be able to say the words I quit loud enough. Brett says he's going to win the belt tonight. Everyone will have to get in line afterwards, but everyone will get a chance to prove themselves against the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Brett sure is confident about his chances tonight. Over on Monday Nitro, Dean Malenko, the new US champion, took on Scotty Riggs, loser of a strap match last night at Uncensored. Another incredibly short match and another incredibly predictable match. Dean got the win with a roll up, though I should mention what Dean said after the match. Dean said there's something missing, he has the United States Championship, but he sends a message to Six saying he also wants the Cruiserweight Championship. The Sultan vs Mike Bell was up next on Raw, while Lex Luger and the Giant took on T Rantula and Knuckles Nelson. Local job guy Rocky Maivia provided commentary for the Raw match, Mike Bell had been jobbing in WWF since 1992 and I'm pretty confident he never won a single match in the World Wrestling Federation either. This match here against the Sultan of course is no exception. As a matter of fact, of the 119 recorded matches we have for Mike throughout his entire career, he only won 12 of them. The Sultan embarrassed Mike Bell by winning the match with a one handed camel clutch. He pointed to my via at the commentary table afterwards, and the excitement heading into their big WrestleMania match is still at an all time low, I'm not sure if many people really cared about this one. The Sultan, the Iron Sheik and Bob Backlund then approach the commentary desk and Akbar McMahon tells Rocky it's a trap. Tony Atlas shows up to steer Rocky away from danger, 
Atlas won the tag belts with Rocky Johnson back in 83 as the Soul Patrol. That's how it ended folks, not much else to say. Lex Luger and the Giant had a tag match against uh, Roy Tarantula and Roy Nelson. I'm gonna assume the athletic looking guy on the left is Tarantula or t Tarantula, thanks to his sick spiderweb ring tights. Luger had a great showing last night at Uncensored but he was unable to get the job done. And as for the big fire breathing giant, well he was the first man eliminated from the three team Uncensored main event. Here on Nitro against hot competition like the two Roys, Luger and the giant look like absolute superheroes. The giant completely wrecks shit Spider-Man and he invites Knuckle Shuffle Nelson to step into the ring. Nelson too gets destroyed. When both men try to attack the giant afterwards, the giant makes quick work of his opponents. Luger decides to just get in the ring and apply the torture rack on Peter Parker while the giant pins Knuckles. Absolutely nothing competitive about this match at all but fun seeing the crowd pop for the baby faces. After the match, the giant and Luger talked about Sting. The giant says he's ecstatic that Sting has come home to WCW and Lex says his faith in humanity was restored when Sting showed up to take out the new world order. Luger says the team WCW may not have won at Uncensored but WCW as a whole got uplifted by Sting's actions after the bout. Shawn Michaels is back and he's cutting a promo on Raw while the NWO have a few things they want to say on WCW Nitro. The Shawn Michaels fan club is in attendance for Raw tonight it seems. It also looks like Shawn has found his smile and so has Vince McMahon for that matter. Just look at these two smug bastards. HBK says he found his smile in San Antonio and he decided to bring it with him wherever he goes. And check out this fan, she screams for Shawn Michaels and it's almost like she catches herself on afterwards. She goes from joyful to depressed in around 2 seconds. HBK thanks the fans for the get well cards and he thanks fans for their patience over the past few weeks. In regards to Sean's knee, HBK has another appointment next week with Dr. Andrews where Sean hopes to find out exactly what's going on and he hopes to know then if he's gonna get back in the ring. HBK wants to be in action within a few months whether anyone likes it or not. Sean then says he has a bone to pick with Vince McMahon, oh I'm sure you do. HBK says Wrestlemania is right around the corner, he sat at home waiting for the phone to ring but it didn't ring once. HBK isn't sure how Vince McMahon can have a Wrestlemania event without Shawn Michaels and because he wasn't invited, Michaels decides to invite himself to the biggest show of the year. Shawn says he's gonna provide commentary for the WWF title match at Mania and he's also gonna appear at the Slammy Award show. Shawn has a new home and he has a whole lot of face to spill so he needs those Slammy Awards. And I have got a whole lot of face to spill. Face to spill? Space to fill? Is that, the, right. is that the word I'm looking for? I'm face to spill. And that's it, HBK is going to be at Wrestlemania this Sunday and it'll be interesting to see if he gets involved in the title match in some shape or form. After the promo, The Undertaker vandalizes the steel cage backstage. He's clearly annoyed about Brett getting this title shot tonight. Before the NWO promo, Ultimo Dragon defeated Bobby Eaton inside the ropes and like almost every match on this week's episode of Nitro, there isn't much point talking about it in depth. This one clocked in at 1 minute and 17 seconds. Almost makes you wonder why they even bothered having wrestling matches on this week's episode. Ultimo Dragon got the win with his top rope Hurricane Rana or his Dragon Steiner. The NWO then cut a promo and a few things were made official here. After Hulk Hogan says the NWO now reigns supreme after the big uncensored victory last night, Macho Man Randy Savage says he will face Diamond Dallas Page in the future. Although it's not announced here, that match is gonna take place at Spring Stampede. Scott Hall and Kevin Nash then announced that they've already signed contracts for their Spring Stampede match. The Outsiders vs the Steiner Brothers is made official here and when Scott says the NWO are too sweet, someone hits him right on the head with a drink. It's a shitty thing to do but you gotta appreciate the accuracy. There you to his credit, it. Hall plays it off well. That's how the promo ended, with Scott getting drenched and Eric Bischoff saying the bad guy's hair is still perfect. The NW hotline is then promoted afterwards, $1.59 per minute to hear Scott Hall say I dig it the most and Hulk Hogan saying the NW is tits brother. 
Davy Boy Smith vs Vader on Raw, Mongo and Jared vs Alex Wright and Mark Starr on Nitro. We also have a 2 and a half minute Scott Norton vs Chavo Guerrero match. Old Marco starboard on the job to DDP back in January and he's here to do the honours once again. It's a shame too because Alex Wright has been having some good matches recently but this tag match done him absolutely no favours. Mongo and Jarrett worked well together and Starr ended up submitting to the figure 4 leg lock. Another 2 minute bout on Nitro and another skippable match on WCW's flagship show. After the bout, the public enemy attacked Mongo and Jarrett. Remember, Steve McMichael interfered in the public enemy vs Harlem Heat tag match last night. Somehow, Mongo even makes a brawl on the rampway look messier than what it should be, but nonetheless, the horsemen end up taking care of Grunge and Rock before cutting a promo with Mean Gene Okerlund. Deborah says she doesn't like to brag, but she told everyone that Double J would make a great horseman. Double J says he proved himself last night at Uncensored, which is absolute bullshit seeing as Team Piper, collectively, were the first team eliminated and Jarrett didn't do anything special at all. And Big Mongo says the public enemy better bring the buffet table at Spring Stampede because Steve wants to eat some public enemy tartar. Mongo's ready to eat some public enemy tartar! Tartar! And Mean Gene drops the mic when Deborah says Johnny Grunge's girlfriend should be an artist because she's good at drawing flies. Drawing flies. Scott Norton vs Chavo Guerrero then. It starts off with Norton throwing Chavo back into his corner. Chavo tries to fight back with a dropkick but this only makes Big Norton more angry. A clothesline puts Chavo on the mat and Norton talks a little smack to the fans at home. Scott was one intimidating dude wasn't he? Norton chases Chavo around the outside and Guerrero manages to keep the big man at bay. Mike Tanay talks about Scott travelling to Japan later in the week to take part in the NWO vs New Japan angle that's going on within New Japan Pro Wrestling as Scott catches Guerrero in midair before throwing him back in the ring. Chavo then tries to take Norton down at the legs but Scott will not go down. Even after a top rope dropkick, Norton stays on his feet and Norton makes Chavo pay with a hard Irish whip to the corner. Watch that again in slow motion. Chavo's sunset flip attempt gets him absolutely nowhere and the crowd is distracted by something going on away from the ring as Scott ends it with a ridiculous powerbomb. Scott looked completely dominant in this match and I do wish WCW done more with Norton sometimes. Switching over to Raw, we had a Davy Boy Smith vs Vader match and there wasn't a chin lock in sight. Remember, Vader and Mankind will get a shot at the tag titles at Wrestlemania and I always felt this match was a waste of talent. After that European title final match, a Bulldog vs Owen rematch would have been great and even a Mankind vs Vader match could have been fun as well but Vader started off in the driver's seat in this one but Bulldog came back after no selling two short arm clotheslines. Bulldog then pulled off a vertical suplex on Vader that looked extremely impressive. When we came back from commercial break it was all Vader once again, but Davey pulled it back with another impressive power move, this time it was a big slam. And just as Bulldog was about to put Vader away with a running power slam, Mankind jumped on the apron to grab Vader's leg. This leads to Owen getting involved too and the match gets thrown out, it's a DQ finish. Davey smacks Paul Bearer and he takes the urn, Bulldog and Owen clear out the ring and the tag champs gain the upper hand just before their Wrestlemania title defence. The Outsiders defend the tag team titles next against Bunkhouse Buck and Mike Enos while Billy Gunn wrestles Aaron Ferguson. And this, guys and girls, is Arn Ferguson, world champion material, horseman material, hall of fame, top of the food chain, big dog tribal chief material. Grab a bucket because the fucking charisma is dripping everywhere. I like how Billy Gunn steps in front of him as if to say, yeah fuck this guy. Ken Shamrock came out to provide commentary for this one and he does look genuinely excited to be on WWF television. Billy Gunn puts Arn down with a back elbow. Aaron gets unceremoniously dumped on the mat with a slam and Billy Gunn tries to impress Shamrock with a leg lock submission but the tenacious Ferguson makes it to the ropes. Gunn has no problem putting Aaron down again and Gunn sends a message to Shamrock by making his opponent submit with an arm bar. Gunn then provokes Shamrock at the commentary table and Billy then invites Shamrock to step into the ring for a fight. Ken says he won't back down from a chump like Billy Gunn so the two men square off inside the ropes. 
Billy makes fun of Ken's fighting stance but it's Shamrock who gets the last laugh. An armbar makes Billy top out and after squaring off again, Ken brings Billy down and we see the ankle lock. After tapping out again, Gunn grabs a chair but the referee stops Billy from getting back in the ring. Gunn says this isn't over as he walks back up the ramp. As Billy leaves, Steve Austin appears on the Titantron and Austin says Shamrock just took advantage of Gunn after Billy had a brutal match. Stone Cold says Shamrock doesn't belong in the World Wrestling Federation. All Ken's done is get in a few street fights and someone's been there to record them on video. Shamrock is overrated and one day Stone Cold will beat Ken in the middle of the ring. Tonight, Austin says by hook or crook, Bret will win the cage match and Austin will get a title shot at WrestleMania. Stone Cold says he won the Royal Rumble, he lost the Final Four due to injury, Austin was destined to main event WrestleMania 13 and he will make sure he gets his title shot when all is said and done. Aaron Ferguson's dad then begins setting up the steel cage back in the arena. The Outsiders and Six have a little sing-along before their match. What you gonna do when we come for you, bad boys, bad boys? And Scott Hall invites the challengers to come down to the ring and get this show on the road. Bunkhouse Buck and Mike Enos make their way down the ramp and this one was a little more competitive than expected. Scott Hall destroys Buck to start us off and after taking a bulldog, Buck tries to make a tag but Mike Enos wants nothing to do with it. Big Sexy comes in and more punishment gets delivered. Nash throws Buck into Enos and this forces a tag. Hall and Enos take over inside the ropes. Enos takes a fall away slam but Mike is able to build up some momentum with a clothesline to the bad guy. Bunkhouse Buck manages the knee haul from the apron and this leads to Scott taking another clothesline followed by a power slam. Enos is then able to lock in a sleeper. This is probably the most offense anyone has ever gotten in the ring when wrestling the outsiders in a proper tag match on Nitro, but that's the end of it. Hall counters with a side suplex and Nash gets tagged in. Bunkhouse Buck gets tagged in too and Nash cleans house like a babyface who just got a hot tag. Buck takes a jackknife, Enos takes the Outsiders edge, and the Outsiders successfully defend the tag team titles. The Bret Hart vs Psycho Sid steel cage match is up next, while Chris Benoit returns to Nitro with a match against Billy Kidman. Let's look at the Benoit match first, it's under a minute long anyway so we'll get that out of the way before looking at the big Raw main event. Benoit kneels a side suplex, Kidman feels the wrath of the rabid wolverine in the corner, Chris then hits Kidman with a knee and Kidman gets launched into the air before slamming hard on the mat. Crippler crossface and it's all over, absolute destruction. The promo afterwards is longer than the match. Ric Flair joins Benoit and Woman in the ring and Chris starts the promo off by saying Arn Anderson is facing the biggest mountain he's ever faced in his career but Chris knows the enforcer will be back. In regards to Kevin Sullivan, Benoit says to see Kevin's son talk to his father the way he did, it's saddening and Sullivan needs to step back and evaluate where he is in life. Woman says she has nothing to say about the whole Kevin Sullivan situation. Ric Flair wants to talk about Roddy Piper. Piper wasn't happy that Flair and Anderson didn't show up at Uncensored and Rick says Piper had all he needed in Benoit, Mongo and Jarrett. Rick says he was in Savannah, Georgia with all the girls, so there it is, Rick was conducting horseman business and we all know that's the perfect excuse. Flair says that the horseman reported back that Roddy Piper dropped the ball at Uncensored and maybe Piper should have taken his own advice a few weeks back and maybe Piper should have stayed at home with his family. Flair ends it by saying Arn Anderson won't wake up from surgery and want to go home like Piper, Anderson will wake up, ask for a Miller Lite and that's because he's a horseman. So it looks like we might see a Ric Flair vs Roddy Piper feud begin to blossom on WCW television. Alright the cage match, Bret Hart vs Psycho Sid, a lot is on the line in this one and this weeks Wrestlemania event could look very different depending on the outcome. Hart starts off strong by bringing the fight to Sid in the corner but it's those big right hands that brings the WWF champion back into the match. Steve Austin watches on backstage as Bret comes back with a snap mare followed by an elbow drop. Bret tries to escape but he ends up getting his legs smashed into the steel. Sid likes the sound of Bret's bone smashing so he lifts the hitman up and Hart gets his back rammed into the cage not once but twice. 
Sid then decides that's enough and he goes to leave the cage but Brett quickly wakes up and he stops Sid from winning the match. Both men fight on the top rope and it ends with Sid getting the upper hand. Brett is not looking good here but he creates some separation with a rake to the eyes and a jumping right hand to the forehead manages to stun Psycho Sid briefly. Brett again tries to escape but he ends up getting slammed from the top rope. Sid tries to exit via the cage door but Steve Austin shows up and he closes the door shut. Remember Steve wants Hart to win tonight to get that WrestleMania title shot. We come back from commercial break and Austin is still on the outside as Brett works on Sid's lower back. This is a 2 on 1 situation here that greatly benefits the challenger. After getting whipped to the corner, Sid hits Brett with a power bomb. This should be enough to end the match. The WWF Champion begins climbing out of the cage but Steve Austin climbs up and he stops Sid from leaving. Bret Hart climbs up too and both Hart and Austin attack Sid at the top of the cage. The Undertaker then shows up to even the odds. He too has an interest in the outcome of this match. So the dead man begins attacking Brett and Austin and we have a big old fight happening at the top of the cage. It ends with Brett superplexing Sid while Austin hits the Undertaker on the outside with a chair. Austin kicks the Undertaker while he's down as both Sid and Brett wake up in the ring. Sid begins climbing the cage, Brett goes to leave via the cage door. But the Undertaker gets back up and he slams the door in Brett's face. This allows Sid to leave the cage. And this means Psycho Sid vs The Undertaker is still the main event WWF Championship match at WrestleMania 13. An insanely high amount of drama here that had fans on the edge of their seats. It's not the best cage match in terms of the in-ring action, but because so much was on the line it becomes very memorable and very fun to look back on. Brett, once again, was screwed out of the WWF Championship. If Taker and Austin didn't get involved, who knows what could have happened. But Brett is going to let everyone know how he feels next and the promo that ends Raw is nothing short of brilliant. This is my favourite Bret Hart promo coming up of all time and I can't wait to watch it again. The Bret Hart promo closes Raw while Harlem Heat vs Rick and Scott Steiner ends this week's Monday Nitro. Michael Buffer is on Nitro, that's a nice surprise. Buffer is going to introduce the competitors on their way to the ring, showing us that WCW had some serious money to burn at this point. Rick Steiner was jumped last night at Uncensored and he didn't compete in the main event. Here on Nitro, he seems to be 100% healthy. So we have Brothers vs Brothers on Monday Nitro. Booker T starts the action off with Scotty Steiner and a big heel kick puts Scott on the mat. Scott replies with a press slam before tagging in Rick. Rick hits a few Steiner lines before Booker manages to tag in Stevie Ray and from here, Harlem Heat try to keep Rick away from his corner. Rick hits Stevie Ray with a scoop power slam but Stevie and Booker work together to keep the dog faced gremlin away from Scott. Booker gets tagged back in, he hits Rick with a sidewalk slam and I think time constraints were a problem here because Rick makes his hot tag way too early and the pop could have been better for Scott coming in to clean house. After Scott hits Booker with a belly to belly suplex, the match breaks down and all four men begin fighting. The New World Order then run down to the ring to launch an attack. The NWO destroy Harlem Heat and the Steiner brothers. The referee throws the match out, but Lex Luger and the Giant end up making their way down to the ring to even the odds. After the baby faces gain the upper hand, Sting drops down into the ring, and just like last night at Uncensored, Sting makes it crystal clear that he represents WCW and he wants to fight Hulk Hogan. As a company, WCW had absolutely struck gold with the Sting character and they were absolutely right to milk this Hogan vs Sting build up for all it was worth during 1997. This is how Nitro went off the air. Vince McMahon gets in the ring to talk to Bret Hart, saying that Bret must feel very frustrated about how things turned out tonight. Bret pushes Vince on his ass while saying, quote, Frustration isn't the goddamn word for it, this is bullshit. Vince gets himself out of the ring as it's pretty clear that Bret is absolutely fuming about what happened tonight. Bret says he's been screwed again by the WWF and Vince McMahon. Everyone knows it, there's so much injustice going on and Bret has had enough. The WWF turn a blind eye to everything that's happening, Vince McMahon turns a blind eye to it, Monsoon turns a blind eye to it, Bret should be the WWF champion. 
Everyone in the locker room knows Brett's the best there is, the best there was and the best there ever will be and if the fans in attendance don't like it then tough shit. Vince doesn't know how to react to Brett's outburst and it is a big change of character but this is a key moment not just for Brett but for Vince McMahon too. Vince said when Brett pushed him down in the ring it was kind of the genesis of the Mr McMahon character. Steve Austin appears on the Titantron and he says Brett just threw away a WrestleMania main event because he's a loser. Austin tried to help Brett but the hitman couldn't get the job done. Hart says the reason they called Steve Stone Cold is because his stones are so cold that he won't step into the ring and fight Brett like a man. Sid then reappears and Brett said that Sid is wearing the hitman's belt. The Undertaker then makes his way down to the ring and Brett launches an attack on the Phenom. Stone Cold then comes back out and Austin attacks Brett while Taker focuses on Psycho Sid and we have all four men fighting in and around the ring. Brett gets held back by Pat Patterson and the Hitman ends up punching the Hall of Famer before making his way back to Austin and then Shawn Michaels appears and he watches the carnage unfold. HBK grabs a chair but he doesn't do anything with it. All four men continue to fight as Raw's war goes off the air, ending a fantastic episode of Raw and telling a great story heading into WrestleMania. Vince Russo had taken over head riding duties at this point and it's easy to rip into Russo for the bad decisions he's made. We also know that Russo's riding was filtered through Vince McMahon but this episode of Raw in the last half hour was brilliant. Bret Hart is on the brink of completely turning his back on fans, Austin's popularity is going through the roof, Shawn Michaels is the unpredictable wildcard and we have a clash of the titans when The Undertaker meets Psycho Sid for the WWF title. The World Wrestling Federation are firing on all cylinders and many wrestling fans didn't even know it. The majority of fans were still choosing WCW and the NWO which by the way was also good stuff. In short it was one of the very best times to be a fan of pro wrestling and because the World Wrestling Federation started fighting back the Monday Night War was now becoming way more interesting week after week. Raw wins this week's Reliving the War. Matches on Nitro were comically short this week and nothing could beat the drama during and after the steel cage main event on Raw. Here's how I would have scored it using the old scoring system. And with this victory Raw continues catching up to Nitro with 30 points, WCW has 35 points and we've had 10 ties. Nitro won in the television ratings with a 3.6 while Raw got a 2.4. This Sunday I'll be uploading a full review of Wrestlemania 13 and I once again get the opportunity to talk about the submission match, one of my favourite matches of all time. Please subscribe and join me later in the week. Episode 76 of Reliving the War will include the Wrestlemania Fallout show where Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels have another in-ring confrontation while over on Nitro the NWO cash in their uncensored title shot. Thanks for watching this one guys, I do appreciate it and take care.